Hey everybody, it's Eddie J on Crypto. Hope you're having a good one. So let's dig into what I covered during the Crypto Minute. So Bitstamp, disappointing. They caved. They had to have caved because they delisted almost the same exact coins that were brought up in the Coinbase case and you know other cases by the SEC as being so-called so securities. We have Axie Infinity. We have Chili's. We have uh, Mana. We have Matic, Near, Solana. Sandbox, Let's just wow. Um, I get it. They're a smaller, they're a smaller exchange, you know, centralized exchange. But you know, with everybody fighting the fight, that's the only way we're going to win. Is if everybody comes together and fights this, fights the fight. And I guess they're saying, yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna buy into it. We're just gonna, we're just gonna give in. We're gonna throw in a towel. We don't need that kind of heat. I kind of get it. But then, what the hell are you gonna sell? Because the SEC stance is everything's a security except for Bitcoin, and even then I scratch my head if they don't really think it's a you know it's a uh, a security. So for me, I sit there and I just kind of go, wow, you know, guys, let's let's pull it together. But if you don't have if you don't have that stuff out of your Bitstamp account by August 29th, you're gonna have problems. So let's get it done, folks. Get out of there. No, excuse me. When I first got into crypto, I had looked at Bitstamp tested it out but i never settled on it i did a couple of transactions but I don't, i'm not holding anything there and this right here specifically because of matic um bitstamp has no use in my portfolio of you know decentralized and centralized exchanges i'm done um doesn't mean that i won't come back one day if you know things change but for right now yeah i'm i'm done now, you might be wondering why there was such a surge in Bitcoin yesterday, and that might actually continue today. There were a couple of things. One is, supposedly there was some leaked news between Invesco and BlackRock saying that they absolutely do expect to have uh, Bitcoin, spot, Bitcoin spot ETFs within the, four, within the next four to six months. Wow. Wow. And apparently, you know, Mike Novogratz was in on that as well. Supposedly, all this is alleged stuff. But yeah, then there's another report out, you know, crypto quant. A bunch of people think that institutional investors are going to really start buying Bitcoin later this year. OK, that kind of coincides with everything that everybody's been saying anyway. So that's really no huge news. But the other piece of news that could make a big difference a lot of bank stock got downgraded by Moody's. I mean, a lot of banks, 10 banks that got down, downgraded by Moody's. But the big problem is, is not just the 10 banks that were downgraded, but it was also the few banks that were flagged. So BNY Mellon, US Bank Corp, M&T Bank, all downgraded, all downgraded. Um, let's see who else. Commerce Bank shares, BOK uh, Financial Corporation, Old National Bank Corp and Prosperity Bank shares are a few more that got it. Um, flagged were actually Bank of New York Mellon, U.S. Bank Corp, State Street and Truist Financial as you have the potential of being right of being downgraded. So not that they were downgraded, but that they have the potential of being downgraded. Yeesh. Now notice the big banks, they're doing just fine. <laughs> um, it, you you kind of have to break it down and say to yourself, well, why are they doing just fine? Well, better banking practices, you know, um, stronger financials, just doing more things to make it happen. Sorry for all the noise in the background. Um, so you kind of have to pay attention to what's really going on, what's really affecting the market and take deep dives into it. Not everything that affects cryptos and your other investment vehicles are going to come from within the same space. Some of it is going to come from external sources. So if you look at the crypto space and you look at banking, they've kind of decoupled a little bit. So if something negative happens to banking, that's probably going to make, well, it's kind of traditional, something bad happens to banking, usually crypto rises. Why? Stored value. Stored value. And you're really looking at Bitcoin for that. But as we all know, if Bitcoin rises, most other coins will also rise. Now, what I'm looking for next week is huge. I think it's going to be huge. You've got major news happening or coming out because of Shiberium next week. Shiberium, sorry. 
Um, I should know better. I'm an owner um, of, of, of Sheep. I am a part of the Sheba Army. I'm a part of the XRP Army. I love both projects. Um, but next week should be huge. They should be launching Shibarium officially. Testnet is over. Um, they should be launching the, you know, their layer two. We should be hearing about dApps joining in and hitting up on, on Shibarium. Um, we should be hearing about a lot of stuff next week. Over the past 30 days, Shibarium's been up over 30%. Over the past seven days, seven, it's been up 20%. Are we close to having Shibarium shave another zero? Highly possible, right? Because if you look at Shiba Inu and where it's at right now, it could be getting back into the space where it was before, where, yeah, it can shave a zero. That would be huge, huger than huge. So pay attention to that opportunity. Do your own research, do your own investments as you will, but pay attention to that opportunity. I do have a question for you. Have any of you been looking at uh, businesses that might be for sale? If you're investing, have you been doing that? I'd like to know, drop me a note. Um, just curious because I don't, yeah, I, this is crypto, but I talk about a lot of different things. And some of the things I look at are real estate, businesses that you can buy that are for sale. I got a call yesterday from some guy saying, hey, I have some buyers that might want to buy your company. Dude, it's not for sale. This is all going to my kids. You know, I mean, that, that's the way that's going to roll. Um, but if they want to invest in one of my one of the projects that we have going on, more than happy to have a conversation. You know what I got from that guy? Crickets. <laughs> That's what I got from that guy. Crickets. Yeah, he hit me up on uh, on LinkedIn. Um, but I do pay attention to a lot of different opportunities where you can get into a bank or I mean get into a business. You know, you have a record number of of people that own businesses that are about to shut down because. Their kids don't want the business and they're looking to sell the business because they want to retire or whatever have you. And you you start to think, wow, that there are huge opportunities. And we're talking about probably the largest generation of businesses that are going to be for sale over the next few years. That's why I asked the question. Right. That's really why I asked the question. Um it's still hitting me a little a little hard that Bitstamp did what they did, right? I mean, Axie Infinity, Chili's, um, Mana, Matic, Near, Sandbox, Solana. That's not small. That's not small. If you're if you're using Bitstamp, you're gonna have to ask yourself. In the United States, mind you, this is for United States users. It's not for any place else. Why? Because you know, the United States is a mess when it comes to when it comes to crypto. But if I'm Bitstamp, I, I really have to rethink what I'm doing. Like, seriously, what's my business then? I, they also did announce that they're going to have a permanent um, APY for XRP. I think it's like 2%. That's like banking numbers. Are you serious? But I guess if you're holding XRP on their platform, you can, you can have, just be making that money. I wouldn't thumb my nose at it because it's making money. But I, I I have no reason to use it. I have no reason to use Bitstamp if I can. I mean, those are popular coins. I, I just don't see it. Sorry. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to put egg on their face, but I think they kind of did it to themselves. I mean, I, I'm looking at Coinbase and I'm like, yeah, well, you know, if I need a centralized exchange, I'll be on Coinbase. That's the one I'll be using. You know, if I'm, you know, in, in a pinch, maybe I'll use Binance. There are a couple others that, you know, I'll, I'll dip into if if it's if it looks right, if the math works out. Yeah, I do. I do the math so I can see, like, am I going to, you know, lose money during certain transactions or even make money on certain transactions? I've been pretty good. You know, 90 percent of the time I make money on the transaction. So I make money not just on the reason for the transaction, but I'm making money on the actual transactions to get to the end. So that's what I pay attention to. So just do your own research and teach yourself about these things. And if you have questions, ask me. Maybe I can go look it up. But you know what we should do? We should get to the numbers. Let's get there right quick. 
So let's refresh this. And really fast, you can see, you know, on the losing side, it stops right about there. XDC is down 6%. That's something I do pay attention to. Um, everybody else, yeah, I'm not paying attention. I mean, there, anything below a 5% move up or down, you know, it's got to be a 5% sway. So if you're at 2% positive and you just came from 3% down, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay attention to that math. Um, on the winning side, you know, you come all the way, you're, you're all the way down to here to see who's who's winning. Solana is up 6%. <laughs> I guess they're not worried about that Bitstamp news. You'll just go someplace else for your for your Solana. Hedera is up 8%. We're talking in the past 24 hours. Past 24 hours. Right? I told you a couple of days ago, Hedera was, was making a couple of moves. And, you know, they had they had launched, you know, some some they had upgraded their security and things like that. This is why you pay attention. This is why you keep your nose in the news. Shiba Inu is up 11 percent. Pepe, not something I'm involved with, but something I do pay attention to only because of the sheer volume of it all. Um, they're currently ranked 79th and they're up 15 percent. So this is this is all stuff that we should be paying attention to. And there's nobody else above that that I'd be that I'd be looking at. Uh, who else is on there that you know I might pay attention to? That's it. Well, you know, you could mention OKB, but they're only at five percent. You pay attention to that renders at five percent. You pay attention to those. You see what else they can do. You see if they have any news, and you move on from there. Um, let's see, Bitcoin twenty nine eight twenty six. That's a good number. We hit above thirty thousand for Bitcoin, and then it came down. But this is the second time in, I think, a few days that it's hit above 30 and come back down. I think we're right there where we might actually hit and remain above 30. But we'll see. We probably need a couple more things to pop off. And probably, I'm thinking, next week. Um, Ethereum, up above the 1850 number that I like, right? So 1862 is a good thing. Solana's up to 2476. You know, that's good. So you can see who's bright green that's making you happy and that's that could actually do something for your portfolio um, if you do your own research. I don't give out, you know, investment news or any, I mean, investment advice or anything else like that. So don't think you're going to get advice from me. Think that I'm just going to share what I'm doing, right? Um, the fear and greed index is at 50, right? Which is actually pretty good, right? We're still in neutral territory, but that's a good number to be at. It really, really is. Um, you, let, let me go back to that. So you can see that, you know, we, we keep bouncing along. You know, right here is when you hit that 30, right? And again, 30 is the next ceiling. But the one that I'm really paying attention to is going to be 31,580. And again, we're still moving within within my green band. It starts at 26,475 and goes all the way up to 31,580. And we've been moving along that band for a while, for a long while. So pay attention to these things. You know, it can make a difference for you. It really can. Um, let's see. And you can see by the numbers, by straight numbers, you know, what's been up, what's been down. You can see Ethereum. Um, XRP is doing all right. It's coming back up a little bit. It was at 60 cents. Think about that. It had hit 60. Now it's at 64. So is that a is that a huge move? Yeah, it's a pretty nice move. And so if you got in when, you know, when that opportunity presented itself as a DCA opportunity, and I think we're still in DCA opportunity territory, you could have, you could have made a couple of bucks. Dogecoin is just hovering where it was before, 7.5 cents. Um, Cardano is below 30 cents, so that might be a, a buying opportunity for me. Um, Solana, like I said, is up. You can see where, you know, over the past 30 days, it's up almost 15%. Polygon, not doing so well on the year. But, but I look at it and I kind of say that number right there, to me, that's a good selling. That's a good buying point for me. It really is because I can see at the, you know, as the year goes on that other things go up and people realize that Polygon is the platform. You know, there's Polygon, Optimism, Arbitrum. Those are the ones. That's what I'd be playing, paying attention to across across that space. And remember, Polygon is already established, still the big boy. Um, Arbitrum could be coming on strong. Optimism could be coming on strong. However, Polygon is already there and they're still going. Right. So and there's and there's more than enough room for everybody. It's more than enough room for everybody. Shiba Inu, look at that. There it's really close to shaving a zero. 
it's really, really close to shaving one of these zeros. That would be huge. That's a big, that's a big, you know, pump up. And I'm expecting that next week by the very, at the very least. Anyway, this is Eddie Joe and Crypto. Hope you like what I'm doing. If you do, drop me a note. Let me know. If you have questions, maybe I have the same question. Let me know and maybe I can go do some research for the both of us. Anyway, hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.